Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Nick, the master Prenot artist behind Orthodox Handmade, and welcome to our 15th episode on YouTube, where we'll be finding the answer to the question, who are the real Christians according to the Quran? To put everyone's mind at ease, no, I'm not converting to Islam, so everyone just calm down. I simply came across this video on YouTube, listened to it, and thought it would be of interest to my audience. The speech segments have come from a video entitled Quranic View on Russia and the Eastern Orthodox Christianity, The Coming Alliance. And it will be linked in the description below for anyone who wishes to view the video in its entirety. Before we continue, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, hit the notifications bell to be notified when new episodes drop, and be sure to smash that like button. This will prompt the YouTube algorithm to recommend Orthodox Handmaid's unique content and assist in growing our faithful audience. We are currently sitting at 1,124 faithful YouTube subscribers, and in keeping with our new tradition, this episode's new subscriber shoutout goes to Ben Gott. Thank you very, very much for subscribing to Orthodox Handmade. It is greatly appreciated. Also, be sure to watch until the end to receive all the information in this video and find out the topic of our upcoming episode. Firstly, for a bit of context, why don't we find out a little bit about the man whose words we'll be listening to today. Imran Nazar Hussein was born in 1942 into an Indo-Trinidadian family in Trinidad and Tobago. He is an Islamic scholar, author, and philosopher who specializes in world politics, economics, modern socioeconomic political issues, and the future events concerning the end times. So without any further ado, let's listen to his words on who the real Christians are according to the Quran. The Quran speaks about two kinds of Christians. Two kinds of Christians. Who are those who in Akhir Zaman will be the closest in love and affection to you Muslims? Allah speaks in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Ma'idah, which is the fifth surah of the Quran. And he says, للذين آمنوا الذين قالوا إنا نصارى. Every single word in the Quran is so powerful, so we can see clearly who are the Christians. And you will most certainly find in time to come that you will most certainly find at that time when the Qur'an was revealed and in the future. Now listen carefully. That there will be a Christian people in time to come who will be closest in love and affection for you. Muslims. Why? This is because they still have amongst them the integrity of the institution of priesthood and monasticism. The monastery, the monk, the monastic way of life. And because they are not an arrogant people. They are not an arrogant people. Who are they? Can we identify them? Which Christians is Allah speaking about? What is there in these Christian people? How can we recognize them? Is it the Roman Catholic Church? Or the Protestant Church? Which Christians is Allah speaking about? Allah gives us guidance by which to identify the Christians will be closest in love and affection to us. Which is either present or future. Because this is fail modaria. Present and future. The Arabic uh, uh, verb. And you'll most certainly find in time to come. 
that those who will be closest in love and affection for you would be a people who proclaim we are Christians. Oh, but wait a minute. They don't proclaim themselves Christians in the United States, Britain and France. No, no, no. Religion is a private affair. We will be secularized. We proclaim ourselves French and British and American. And religion is for Sunday morning. <laughs> that couldn't be British and American and French Christians because they hide their religious identity. They secularize their religion. But these are a different kind of Christian people. They proclaim themselves, their identity. We are Christians. It has to be a different kind of Christian who proclaims my identity. I am Christian. So this could not be Western Christianity kindly eliminated. A Christian people who will be closest in love and affection for you Muslims at that time. As you found at the time of the Prophet when the Quran was revealed, when the Christians of Abyssinia, a Christian people, opened the doors opened their hearts and kept us as refugees. And when Makkah sent their emissaries to demand the repatriation of the runaway slaves, the Negus said, no, I'll never give them up. And we want to go and remind Bulgaria and remind Greece and remind Russia and remind the whole Orthodox Christian world this is what you were like once upon a time. You will most certainly find in time to come, not only at that time, but in the future as well, that those who will have the greatest love and affection for you Muslims will be a people who say we are Christians. That's not all. But there's a second reason, second, second thing that Allah speaks about. The Quran goes on to say, ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ مِنْهُمْ كِسِّسِينَ ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ مِنْهُمْ كِسِّسِينَ The reason why they will behave like this. You would know these Christians because they still have their ulama. This is because they still have amongst them the integrity of the institution of priesthood intact. The religious scholars still have a status in that Christian people. That side of the world, the religious scholarship is gone. But this side of the world, the ulama of the Christians still have a very high status and a very important function in society. In that Christianity out there where a man could marry another man and get a marriage certificate, the priest is the laughing stock of the world. In this Christianity out here, Orthodox Christianity, the ulama or the priest still have a status, high status. And then Allah goes on to say something else, a third thing, a third thing, Baruchbana. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ مِنْهُمْ كِسِّسِينَ وَرُهْبَانَ There will be another way you can recognize these Christians. What is it? And that is because they still have the institution of monasticism. Oh, eliminate Western Christianity. In Britain and in France and in the United States and Canada, the monastery is now McDonald's hamburgers. or Kentucky Fry, or Pizza Hut. There are no more monasteries. The most monastic way of life is gone. Which Christians have the monastery today? Not Britain, not the United States, not France, not Germany, because the monastery today is McDonald's hamburgers. 
or the monastery is today a bingo hall or a dance hall. It's not just the monastery that goes up on sale and McDonald's buys it. The churches are also going up on sale all over. And the Muslims are buying churches, making them masjid, yeah, all over the place. Monastic way of life is disappearing. Indeed, the churches of Britain are being sold now. Masajid are coming up where there used to be a church. Four percent of the British people now go to church. Britain is essentially an atheist country. But these Christian people still have monasticism. But in this part of the Christian world, the monk still has an important place. The monastic way of life is still treasured, which is why Kosovo is such a difficult problem. Because Kosovo is the heart of the monastic life of the Orthodox Christian. And the Ottomans knew that. And Bill Clinton knew that very well at Daytona. Oh yes, they knew it. The devils. So this is the Christian who will be the closest in love and affection for you. Which Christian people is Allah talking about? So you have to look for a Christian people who are still holding on to the monastic way of life. Where are they? Who are the Christians who to this day are holding on to monasticism? Even if you perceive them to be hostile to you now because of past grievances, the Quran cannot be false. You can change their hearts and tomorrow they'll be the closest in love and affection to you. Yes. I hope Egypt is listening. So you'll identify them, you recognize them because of the institution of monasticism. And then Allah says a fourth thing about them. But one more thing by which you can recognize this Christian with whom you will make an alliance. وَأَنَّهُمْ لَا يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ وَأَنَّهُمْ لَا يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ they're not an arrogant people. They don't want to rule the world. It's because they do not have arrogance stamp on their forehead. <coughs> These are not a Christians who want to get the whole world to become carbon copies of themselves. Huh? They're not an arrogant people who believe that they have a birthright of superiority. And that the rest of the world are like cockroaches. They're only natives and we have the burden to civilize the rest of the world. You can't study international relations and study the history of international politics without coming to face to face with this arrogance. Mm -hmm. The colonization of the rest of the world so that they can civilize the rest of the world. This is not Orthodox Christianity, not at all. When they launched their crusades, were they Christian crusades? Yes, it was a Pope who launched them, but it didn't look at all like Christian crusades. No, why? Because they were not only after Jerusalem, they had two goals they wanted. Number one was Jerusalem and number two was Constantinople. Yes, they wanted Constantinople. They wanted Orthodox Christianity to bend its knee before Rome. And in one of the crusades, perhaps it was the third, they did succeed in conquering Constantinople. And they held it for 80 years. Hmm? They, they had Hagia Sophia, the greatest cathedral of Orthodox Christianity under their control for something like 80 years, until the Orthodox Christians were successful in throwing him out. But they treated the Orthodox Christians with contempt. 
So I don't think this can qualify as a Christian crusade or Christian jihad. It looks more to me like a European jihad rather than a Christian jihad. Hmm? Christianity of the West, you know it. You know Christianity of the West? Very easy to recognize it. It is a Christianity which believes in a fellow with a very big beard. The only one allowed to keep a beard. Everybody has to shave off their beard. But he's allowed to keep his beard. Big, big white beard. And once a year he comes on a reindeer running, flying to the sky. Yeah. Yeah. And he's in every shopping mall now. Every shopping mall. This is the Western Christianity. And they celebrate their Christmas on December 25th. But not the other one. The other Christianity does not have Christmas on 25th of December. And the other Christianity is the one which still has monasticism. You can say what you want about them, but you cannot dispute the fact that these are a people who are different from the West. That one in the West is arrogant. The arrogance of that Christianity in the West which has allied itself with Jews in a Judeo-Christian Zionist alliance, is that it wants to transform the rest of the world into carbon copies of itself. So if you were to put on a sarum, huh? nice for this kind of weather, sarum is very comfortable. Look at that native, huh? look at that native. If you want to be civilized, you got to dress the way we dress. You got to put on trousers and shirt and tie and a jacket. And then you are civilized. They want us to all become carbon copies of themselves. So if you serve me curry fish and rice, that they eat with knife and fork and spoon and so on, and if we want to eat a nasi biryani and we wash our hands and eat and I roll up my sleeve and I wash my hands and like a good Malay, I eat with my hand, my fingers. That's the only way you could eat curry fish and rice. Huh? They say, what a barbarian he is. This is uncivilized. You should eat the way we eat with cutlery. Yeah, curry fish and rice with cutlery. You must dress the way we dress. Take off that dirty beard from off your face. A civilized man is clean shaven. A civilized man wears a shirt and trousers and jacket and tie. I say that's arrogance. And there are many who say the same thing as that. That's arrogance. That we are people who want, when we want to do our numbers past urine and past two, we go outside. And they say if you do that outside, you are uncivilized, you must have a toilet inside. <laughs> Who are these people? Walantar la anka al Yahuda walan Nasar hatta tattabi amilatahu. They are the Western European Judeo Christian Alliance. Well, I say to you, you can take your civilization and throw it in a garbage bin. Because I'm not impressed with your scientific and technological revolution and all this gadgetry that you're bringing to the world, when in your civilization, the highest thing you've ever achieved is a man can marry another man and get a marriage certificate. That is your highest achievement. A man can marry another man and get a marriage certificate, and yet everybody wants a visa to go and live amongst you. That is heaven. Who wants to go and live in Bangladesh? Who wants to go and live in Egypt? Who wants to go back to Algeria? No! That's heaven, where a man can marry another man and get a marriage certificate. Guess what Allah did to those who were doing that? 
Guess what he did to Sodom and Gomorrah? Gomorrah. And guess what he's going to do to you tomorrow? Yes. He destroyed them with a destruction that sent them to the lowest part of the earth. With evidence that remain for, forever. This is Allah's punishment on them. Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, the people of Lut. And what he did to them, he'll do to this world. When you, you are content to live amongst the people who legitimize and legalize the marriage of a man with another man, that's your highest achievement. I went to Russia, and when I went to Russia, I saw lots of beds. Oh, yes. Lots of beds in Russia. These are not an arrogant people. They don't want to rule the world. They don't want to transform all of mankind into carbon copies of themselves. No, that's those Christians. These Christians are different. And because Russia is prepared, is not prepared to submit. And China is not prepared to submit. It's going to check meet them and NATO can do nothing to stop it. Praise be to Allah who allowed us to understand the Quran. They're going to be checkmated. A nuclear war would be one in which Nuclear powers will use every single nuclear weapon that they possibly can use. Because it's going to be a fight to the finish. And so the world can now expect that if a nuclear war were to take place, Excuse me, too late now to say if, rather it should be when the nuclear war takes place. The only ones who don't know that a nuclear war is coming are those, you know, Roti Chanai, Tetari people. When the nuclear war takes place, because they've already declared war on Russia. If you're living in France and Britain, and in Western Europe, and if you don't know that your leaders have declared war on Russia, and the nuclear war is now inevitable, and when that nuclear war takes place, that thousands of nuclear weapons will explode. If you don't know that, then you are living in dreamland. And if you hope to survive, in Western Europe, you're also living in dreamland. That's the price you pay for having Zionist rulers ruling over you. That's the price. I hope you're listening to me, Europe. I hope you're listening to me in Europe. And I hope you're listening to me in the United States and Canada. That is the price that you will pay for having those ruling over you who are ruling on behalf of the Zionists who are Zionists and the nuclear war is now inevitable the war which is coming the big nuclear war which is coming to which we refer subsequently inshallah is meant to deliver to Israel something called Pax Judaica which will replace Pax Americana, which itself replaced Pax Britannica. That's why they want the big war. The war is coming because Russia is challenging their bogus monetary system, that's why. It's not because of Syria. It's not because of Ukraine. It's because of something called BRICS. And so I share with you now, finally, that the Khilafah state would recognize the Orthodox Christian world, which today is led by Russia. 
that these are the people Allah is talking about in the Quran. That they will be closest in love and affection for you. I know Bosnia and Albania and Montenegro are so very uncomfortable with me now. <laughs> but I have a job to do. It's for you to learn. And guidance comes from the Quran, not from NATO. <coughs> yes, Bosnia. Yes, Albania. Yes, Montenegro. Yes, Kosovo. Guidance comes from the Quran, not from Washington. Okay? So Allah is telling you as plain as a billboard on the road to the airport. These are the Christians who in Akhiru Zaman will be closest in love and affection for you. But they are both in the Quran and in the Hadith indications that we will conquer Constantinople on the basis of an alliance with Orthodox Christians. Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, how very interesting. Let's quickly reiterate the speaker's points now, shall we? As he mainly stuck to four main ones during that speech. They are as follows. Number one, the first point he states is that they are a people who are proud Christians. Their religion plays a very important role in their lives. This means they are practicing Christians. They proclaim their identity. I am Christian. Point number two, he then informs us that these Christians who are referred to in the Quran will have and value the institute of priesthood among them. They hold their priests in high regard and respect them. Number three, the third point that he makes is that the real Christians will also have monasticism among them, meaning that such Christians are a people who are able to live a monastic way of life, renouncing the modern worldly pleasures and focusing on spirituality. He claims, rightly so I must add, that in the West, the monastery is now McDonald's hamburgers or Kentucky Fried Chicken. The last description Hussein gives about being able to recognize these Christians is because they are not an arrogant people. He firmly states this in his speech and also reminds the listener that they do not want to make carbon copies of themselves as the West does. It is evident that Western Christianity fails in all of these aspects that are mentioned in the previous four points. The West says, keep your religion to your homes and your personal lives. It's also apparent in many scenarios that the people don't care for their priests, nor do their priests care about them or the children of that faith, if you know what I mean. Think about it if you don't agree. We are now in a time where a Hollywood actress is more respected in the West and priests play no role in society whatsoever. What's even worse is that in many situations they feel they have the right to change the word of God to adapt to modern society and the ridiculousness of certain individuals this is just something to think about, guys. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I sincerely hope that you enjoyed this episode and learned something that ordinarily doesn't come up in conversation. As stated in our last episode, it is all about perspective. Let me know your thoughts about this episode in the comments section below. Do you agree or disagree with Hossein's points? Or do you think that there are other characteristics that identify true Christians more so? Your input and contribution to the channel is always interesting and I endeavor to read and respond to as many comments as possible, guys. Once again, if you like the content I'm creating, be sure to subscribe, hit the notifications bell, and give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget, we're now doing new subscriber shoutouts, so if you're a new subscriber, let us know in the comments section below. Remember to also follow Orthodox Handmade on social media where you can see all the custom tools for prayer that I handmake for people all around the world. Should you be interested in having your very own prayer app created, there are details in the description below, or you're welcome to personally liaise with myself via direct message on both Instagram and Facebook. Our next episode will focus on a man who has never seen a woman. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, he has never seen a woman, and yes, he is orthodox. Be sure to tune in for that one as well. Thank you once again for tuning in, and until next time, stay safe and God bless. Love it,